afternoon and thank you for joining our Build Something Beautiful leadership pre-call. We are so excited um, to have this call. As many of you know, we have partnered with the DSWA and specifically with the um, CEO of that company, Nikki Keohoho. And she was in our office this last week uh, visiting with us and evaluating Heritage Makers, just getting to know who we are and what we're about and uh, all of our programs and such. And she had the opportunity to visit with uh, some of our executives who live locally. And, and of course, Lisa Branch was on the phone, on speakerphone. And they convinced her that she really needed to get to know you, our leaders, and you needed to get to know her um, a little bit better before reunion. So they, um, Nikki agreed to hold this call. Uh, in addition to the other ones that we're going to do for the entire company, this is specifically a leadership call. So we're so excited for this. And thank you so much, Nikki, for offering to do this for our company. We appreciate it so much and, and know how much you, you know, believe in us and, and, and the direct sales industry. I love that. Can you hear me okay, Nikki? I sure can. You sound beautiful. All right, great. Well, welcome to Heritage Makers. I'm so glad that you have the opportunity to speak to our Heritage Maker leadership. We've got quite a crowd today, so I'm excited about that too. So I don't want to take any of your time. I want to give them as much time to hear from you as possible. So I'm going to turn it over to you. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much, everybody. And I'm really honored that you took the time to be here today and, and to kind of see what's going to happen at our, at our upcoming event. I, I just know that that event is going to be a really great place for you to get people, to bring your team so that they can see the compassion and the, and the empowerment that your company is coming forward with to support you in growing your businesses. I loved my time with, uh, you know, Wendy and the Lisa's and, and just everybody that was there. It was a, a great opportunity to understand, you know, the field perspective and, and how all of this fits together. So they just asked if I'd be willing to speak with you. And, and I, and I want to share just a few things today. We are going to open up the line. So you're going to be able to ask questions or share comments. You can write into the comment field. If there's something specific that, that one of your leaders said, oh, boy, you've got to hear this, I'm happy to do that on this call if that's something that, that you want to see happen. And we're also going to open up the call at the end. You know, it'll be about a half an hour call, but at the end I'm going to stay on to see how we can support you by modeling coaching with you. Um, coaching is a piece that your company is dedicated to bringing forward to you and to have that be part of the Heritage Makers culture. And I, I, if you've not experienced being coached, it is a powerful thing to learn and to discover. And, and I'm making that commitment to you today that if there's something you want to be coached on, one, you have to have the headset and the microphone or have used the PIN number to call in. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to call on you. You can write anything in the chat box at any time. And if there's comments, or can you say, you know, can you repeat that? Or would you give a little more information on that? I'm happy to do that. So here's kind of where I want to begin. I've known about your company probably since inception. I've worked with Patty and known Patty for many, many, many years, probably 12 years or so maybe even 13 or 14 years. And in that time, I've, I've seen the dedication to this profession. And I want to say this because I've worked with hundreds of companies. I've been all over the world working with direct selling companies and with field. And, and I have a pretty clear picture of how things work or don't work or how things get off base or back on base or, you know, all of those things. So what I want to say to you is this. We are in a great place with this company. I do know you have a lot of things that are being adjusted right now. And that's the word I'm going to ask you to use with your field, is that some things have been adjusted or enhanced over the last year. And now we're ready just to run with it and go with what we have. And through companies beginning and, and launching and, and in growth, when your company is at, a, is at a new place, they're bringing new things to you. They're bringing new tools. They're bringing new resources. They're bringing um, an additional source of training to you through the DSWA. There's, there's always going to be a few bumps in the road. It's just part of kind of like a marriage, I guess. 
you know, every marriage isn't perfect. I've been blessed. I've, I've been married for 38 years, you know, and I, I, I just feel so fortunate that I've picked, picked the right one. But I'm going to tell you, every relationship has a few bumps. So here's the thing that I want you to understand. It's how you handle things. It's not what happens to you in life. It's how you handle the things that happen. So I'm going to ask you to take a little model. I, I'm big at helping people to learn through models because a model is a visual, so all those visual learners are going to really get this. Along with auditory, you're also going to get the kinesthetic. Because you as leaders, understanding training and how it's delivered and why it is delivered the way it is is important for you. Beyond, you know, a new consultant just needs to get the information in the beginning. You've got to get the reason it's delivered in a certain manner so you can make the adjustments to be more effective as a trainer, which we all want to work on. So this is a, a, a model that will work with you in your auditory, kinesthetic, and visual. So take out a plain piece of paper. At the top of the page, it's like at 12 o'clock, just write the word thought. Thought. Because you see, everything begins with our thoughts. Everything begins with how we think about things. All right now, just we're going to pretend we're at a clock here. Over at 3 o'clock, I'd like you to write the word feelings. Feelings. At the bottom of the clock, at 6 o'clock, write the word action. You can also put inaction. Action, inaction. Then on the left at 9 o'clock, put the word results. Results. Now, I'm going to explain this. And there's an arrow that kind of connects these, so it looks like it's a big circle. So from the word thoughts, the arrow goes to feelings, and from feelings, the arrow goes to action in action. From there, the arrow goes to results. So this is how this model works. Everything begins with our thoughts, the way we think about things. So maybe your teenage son made a sarcastic comment, and your thought was, well, he's just being rude to me. I can't believe he would do that. That is just really not nice at all. When in reality, it could have been that his best friend was bullying him on the way home from school, and he's really upset. But our thought is going to affect how we see that situation. OK? So it starts with thoughts. Thoughts lead to feelings. There's an emotion attached to that thought. Well, I think he's just rude. I can't believe he did that. So from there, it goes down to action. Well, guess what? I'm, he's grounded. That was so awful. I can't even believe he did it. So that's my action. I'm going to ground him. Then what happens to the result? We have a total miscommunication, misunderstanding. Son is upset. I'm upset. And we don't really get to what the root of the situation is. So let's take that to one of your consultants in the business. Our thoughts are that this business is hard. Heritage Makers is difficult. It is really hard. So what happens to their feelings? They're thinking, oh, man, I don't want to do this. I don't want to get out and call people. I don't want to hold any parties or workshops. I don't want to do anything. So that's kind of where our feelings go. It just doesn't. I don't feel good about this. So what happens? Inaction. No bookings and no business building. So what happens to the results? No income, no parties or workshops, no activity, no building of the business. So you see how we can get stuck in a place of our thoughts ruling our results. Now let's take it to a different place. If my thoughts are, wow, I have an opportunity here, it's what I do with this that makes a difference. That will lead over to feelings. I'm excited about building the business. I can't wait to get out and talk to people. So what happened? The action is we actually pick up the phone and call people. We go to work. We do what it takes. So the results, we begin seeing the income happen again. We begin seeing new people joining the team. We begin seeing more workshops across the board, You know, more clubs starting. All the activity, again, happens to create different results. So as a coaching tool, how this would work with one of your consultants is, so tell me about your thoughts around holding workshops right now. 
So what kind of a feeling is that creating for you? So how do you feel about the action that you're taking or not taking? And what's happening there? So what are the results? Now, here's what happens. People come to us with, I'm just not getting making any money. There's just no results. But what they did is, if you do it backwards, okay, your results are you're not making money. So tell me, what are the actions that you're taking to make money? And then how are you feeling about your business right now? And so what are your thoughts about your business? When you take that backwards, you can exactly see the reason you're getting the results you're getting. They don't, you know, it's here for all of us. We don't know what we don't know. We really don't. We don't know what we don't know. And it's not like, you know, we're taught how to, how to hold workshops, how to, how to invite people to join the business, how to prospect, how to, you know, market our, ourselves. We're taught a lot of things. But you see, all of those skills, if we aren't managing our minds, it doesn't matter what skills we have. You're still going to probably get the same results. So they don't know what they don't know. As you develop as leaders in your coaching skills, as you develop as people that are going to work with people to develop them, you're going to learn how to fill the gap. Because here's what we're going to talk about at your, at your upcoming event. There is a gap between what people know how to do and what they're doing. And in that gap is where coaching plays in. So if someone knows how to do a workshop and they're not doing it, training them again on how to do a workshop is not going to be the answer. And that's kind of what we do as, as leaders sometimes. I mean, I've been in your shoes, and I was the one. I didn't know anything about coaching, zero. I was a pretty good trainer over years, but I just kept training and training and training and didn't understand that coaching is totally different than training. And once I got coaching, I saw the power of how I can work with people to have them see something in a different way. It's called a paradigm shift. And the more skilled you get, the better it is. You know, and in talking, you know, to some of, of your leaders and with the company, what I discovered was this, that sometimes we want to put the Band-Aid on the symptom versus going to the cause. So sometimes we can say, well, the reason things aren't going well is because of this, 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 this. And we can talk about what all that is, and it will probably just stay the same unless we get to what's really behind the curtain. So right now, if you've got people on your team that are sort of feeling like they're not um, you know, going where they want to go or they're not getting what they want to get. Here's a simple question. Well, what do you think is happening about that? How are you feeling about that? The questions begin with who, what, when, where, how. Who, what, when, where, how. No judgment in the questions. And then really listen to what they're saying. You know, there is no leader that is perfect. There is no company that is perfect. But I've got to tell you this. Your team will understand you if they know your intention is to do the right thing by them, by the company. Your intention is to serve. And if they understand that, people can kind of work past, you know, whatever else is happening. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to have a real visual that I'll probably do with you at the conference, but I just want you to get this for a moment. Everybody just look over your shoulder. Just look back. Here's the thing that's important to understand. If you're looking into the past, if you're living in the past, if you are focused on the past, you can't see your future. Your vision gets cloudy. So what I'm going to say to you is, to live in the present and look to the future. All of you leaders are creating the future for heritage makers. And it's leading by example. One of the key things for a leader is it's even more important from what you do to who you be. What are your characteristics? 
Now, leading by example is one of the key skills for a leader. One of the key responsibilities as a leader to lead by example. If they haven't got a leader to follow, they don't know where they're going either. It's like a mom saying to their child, no, don't smoke. We don't want you to smoke. Don't smoke. You need to hang around with good kids. Don't smoke. And then we're smoking in the house and maybe not hanging around with good people. They, you know, they don't see it. There's a disconnect there, so they don't see it. So it's focusing on those income-producing activities and the things you have control of. The things you have control over. Now, I'm going to do something that and we may bring it up again because you may have had time to think about it and realize how this impacted your life by the time we're together in September. But I'm going to ask you to draw a bagel on a piece of paper, so an outside circle and a circle on the inside. In that outside circle, put the word, the letters DZ, DZ. That stands for disempowerment zone. Then draw a little arrow into that center hole in the middle, and in that EZ, that's called the empowerment zone. Now here's what's important to understand. What do we really have control over in life? And what do we have no control over in life? So first of all, when I say, what do you have no control over? Most people start with the weather, the traffic, you know, the how much time we have in a day, you know, the taxes, all that kind of stuff. Government, sometimes people believe they have no control. So all of those things, yes, it's true, we have no control over that. The biggest thing that we have no control over is what other people think, what other people say, what other people do. No control over what other people think, what other people say, what other people do. And if we are trying to be in control of that, I want you to get this clearly, we're out of control. When we're trying to control everything else and everybody else, we are out of control. And that is what sucks your energy dry. You will have no energy left if you're always trying to control things you have no control over. So think about this. Maybe it's your mom. You have no control over what comes out of her mouth, and sometimes she doesn't say nice things. What you do have control over is how you respond to that or react. Reactions based on emotion, responses based on logic. So what do you have control over? You have control over what you think, what you say, what you do. And if you just stop and don't do anything, you're the one that made that choice. If you just stop and think that thoughts, well, you're the one that made that choice. If you say unkind or disrespectful things, you made that choice. So the idea is to reside in the empowerment zone. By the way, that's also where faith is. Because if you think you can control everything yourself, then you are, you are doing it alone. So what I think, what I say, what I do, I have control over. So if every day you stay in that empowerment zone, it's a different world. You will have more energy, more passion, more love, more excitement when you reside in that zone. You may have a few people right now that are in the disempowerment zone. Maybe you've been in the disempowerment zone and they followed you right into the disempowerment zone. You, know, you can lead a strong army into that disempowerment zone pretty easily. Or you can come back to the place of, what do I have control over here? What am I going to do with what I have? Now I'm going to say something to you. I believe that Heritage Makers has a huge opportunity. And I wouldn't say it if I didn't believe it. Those of you that, you don't know me, but here's, here's how I am, pretty much straight shooter. And if it's not, I'm not a match for a company, I will tell them I'm not a match. Our values are not in alignment. And, you know, if you're not going to listen, then, you know, what am I wasting my breath? That's, I'm willing to disempower zone don't do. Not going to do it. So I can tell you I believe in your company. I believe in your product. I believe in your mission. I believe in your leadership, which includes you. 
I know you're all loyal people. I know that you've stayed the course. I know that you've, you've, you've been part of this family through thick and thin. That's what it takes to have a company be on top, is a culture of like-minded people who are willing to do what it takes and to be who it takes to run a successful company. Now, I want you to think about this. You've been going down the path to lead the way in this business and maybe moved off the path a little and kind of went sideways for a little while. It's not too late. You can just jump right back on the path. And my guess is if you're a leader of leaders, others will follow. Here's the path that I'm going to ask you to take. Get your team to this event. Get your team here because this is what I know. There is nothing like being in an energy of the people in Heritage Makers. I felt it myself. I already experienced it, I experienced it with some of your leaders. There is nothing like being in that space. There is nothing like seeing the passion and the purpose of your corporate team. There is nothing like seeing leaders who are proud to be part of a company. If you've got people that are faltering right now, and see, a lot of times people think, oh, grass is greener on the other side. Well, I'm going to tell you, there's dead grass over there, too. You can't expect everything to be always brighter. You don't know what you don't know over there, too. Every company has got bumps in the roads from time to time. Those that stay the course are the ones that reap the high reward, as long as you keep doing what it takes to build the business. This is not a business where you coast. It's a business where you refine your passion so that you can continue to go. You know, people say, Nikki, why don't you just retire? Because I'm passionate about what I do. I love what I do. I love making a difference for people. What would I want to sit in a rocking chair and rock my life away for? People, you know, their goal in life, by the way, go to your old FARC class reunion. I'm talking there's a bunch of oldie movies there. I have been a few times. And all they want to talk about is their retirement and their hemorrhoids. I'm telling you, they're all about, like, oh, I can't wait to retire. Well, be retire or die. So here's what I'm saying. Don't worry about retiring. Who else can you make a difference for? Who, who what other young mom could you give hope to? Who else do you know that your example could give them an example in their life that they never had? You can do that. And so retirement for me, now they'll probably have to pull me off the road. You know, I'll never totally retire because I love what I do too much. Where's your love? Where's your passion? Where's your purpose? we got to get back and find that if you've lost it. I'm going to tell you something that is the most requ requested thing that I do. And I do this at live events, and I'll do it for you. Do you want to have it done? If you want to do it today, I'll do it for you today. But if you want to go through this process with me, it, it's pretty magical. And the thing is, all of you can do the same thing. It's a coaching skill. It's just another coaching skill. So here's how it works. People want to know their emotional reason for being in this business. The material reason or material why doesn't necessarily hold somebody in on the path. They can wander. So knowing how to get to someone's emotional why is critical. And that means you've really got to get good at how you ask those questions, how you listen to what they say, and how you give compassionate feedback if necessary. How you acknowledge them for opening up to you. All of these things are, there's four of the five skills right there in coaching. It is magical. Some of the most challenging people in the world, one, you know, we teach DISC, and we can do a little of that if you'd like at the, at the conference, but DISC is a behavioral style, and the Ds are the very high, direct, decisive doers. They are, outgo they are outgoing people that are very task-oriented, and you've got a few of them in your company, I can guarantee you. So here's what happens. Those Ds don't want to show emotion. They want to come out as, I got it all in control. The emotions the last thing I want to show because to them, they think it's a sign of weakness. I was just at a conference, and this woman is a double D, and I'm not talking about the bra size. This woman is like in 
your face a bit. And she goes, I want to see how this works. I, I know exactly why I'm doing this. So, and this, and I would not, I'd say don't do this yet. You have to practice this a few thousand times before you can bring somebody to the stage or you could really get yourself in a mess. But I bring somebody, this woman up on the stage, and I am telling you, when we got that why, her head dropped down and she was crying hysterically and she said, I didn't know. I didn't know. So what I'm going to tell you is, when you know why you're doing something, you are unstoppable. That passion will drive you through whatever bump in the road there is. That passion will make you feel on purpose every single day. So, you know, that why, I'm going to give you a few of them. I'm not going to do this with the other group because it's a little bit over them. But you guys understanding this is really important. Here are the main whys that people are in this profession. And I've worked with thousands more women than I have men, so I can speak more to women. But here are the main ones. One, I want more for my family. I want more for my family is a huge reason for women to be in this profession. They want to provide for their family. They want their family to not be worried or stressed. Many women, they want to bring their husband home from working three jobs so he doesn't die of a heart attack, so he knows his family, so that he can be part of what's happening. For women that are, you know, been a doctor's wife, or they don't need the money. Money is not their deal. And you try and talk to them about money, and you're not going to get them at all in, in, engaged in what's happening. For women that have all the money that they need, it, but maybe they're the doctor's wife. They're the lawyer's wife. They are not their own person. This business gives them something of their own that they can create from the ground up that's just theirs. For many people, they want someone to be proud of them. It might be their mother, their father, their siblings, their partner, their children. And by golly, it could be themselves. I just met with a woman in Canada last week, and she said, I've never had anybody be proud of me in my life. And I said, I know you've been searching for that. How could you search within for you to be proud of you? She said, I never thought I was important enough that that would matter. And we talked a little more, and that's kind of what she figured out, is she just never been proud of herself, ever. So I'm just saying to you, if you've lost sight of your why, you're, you, we're going to learn how to do that at this event. And, and it's a, a gift to people. And it's free. I have people wait in line until 3 o'clock in the morning to figure this out. Well, what does that say to me? That, that the leaders in the company aren't certain how to do this. So we want to work through this. Even if there's times at the event where I can meet with you and your group and we can do it together, I, I, anything I can do to support you, you know what? Patty and Brett are bringing me in there because I care about this company and because I care about them and I care about you. And BSWA is the professional organization that supports the people in this profession, particularly focused on women. So we just want to give and no agenda. There's no agenda. It's just to support you. So. Pretty much what I want you to know is you can tell me anything you want to tell me. I don't have any judgment about what you say or do. If you want to catch me by myself, catch me by myself. You know, I just ask if it's in the bathroom, wait till I'm, you know, finished. Because people follow you in there and they're, they're, you're in the little stall. That's not fun to do. Just wait till I come out and then we can talk all you want. So I'm looking forward to getting to know you, to seeing how we can support you, to see what's next and how we can work together. You know, the company's introducing some wonderful, you know, new skills for you. This is that passion and purpose, renewed passion and purpose, that I believe you, your team, everybody you bring is going to all walk away with. So I just want to say thank you. And Patty, I don't know if you want to just um, open the call or see if somebody raises their hand or has a question, but I'm on, so I'm happy to help.